Hello again YouTube. Uh, so before I start this video some of you might be wondering why I'm wearing a blue towel on my head. And the reason is that it's a pretty hot day and uh, rather than have a fan going in the background ruining the audio of this video I thought I'd put a wet towel over my head to try to keep cool and uh, get you the best sound quality possible. Someone asked uh, if I could do a video on how to change strings. Uh, that was on my uh, Yamaha F325 video. And uh, I like the idea so much that I decided that since I have a different way of uh, getting audio now, I would go ahead and uh, get the exact same strings that came with the guitar and do a whole new video to get you guys an even better idea of what the guitar sounds like with my new method of recording uh, sound. Um, unfortunately, those strings haven't come in yet. They were kind of hard to track down, and I think I'm ordering them from somewhere in Hong Kong, so it, it should take... Uh, it should take a, a little while for those strings to come in. So I decided that I should do a video on how to change strings either way. Uh, but this video is going to be slightly different. It's going to be a video on how to change the strings on an electric guitar. Uh, but in reality, my method of changing strings on electric and acoustic guitars doesn't really change much. Uh, however, I will be doing one on the acoustic just uh, for beginners and for those of you who want to see how I changed my guitar strings in a more in-depth way uh, So Let's uh, truck along here. I have this This is my show guitar and I wish I could tell you what it is. All I know is that it's apparently a Squire Strat uh, I don't really know uh, What series it is um, it doesn't say and uh, It has a sticker on the back with a, what I believe is a serial number, but I tried looking it up and uh, I can't find it. I'll go ahead and uh, display it right here somewhere so that if you have any idea what it is, maybe you can tell the rest of us what it is. Um, this guitar is modified. Uh, I have uh, some uh, Fender Sumerian Cobalt pickups uh, in the bridge, middle and neck position. So it's the whole set. Uh, I'm not sure if Fender still makes these. And so yeah, that's basically the modification I've done to this guitar. Uh, they sound really cool. Uh, if anyone wants to uh, hear that, uh, I might do another video uh, displaying this guitar and how it sounds. I do have another guitar that uh, has the same pickups and there's a difference in sound. So if you guys want to see that, just let me know in the comments below. So we're going to go ahead and change the strings on this guitar. This of course is my show guitar. I use this in my band. Uh, uh, it's been through quite a bit and I do enjoy playing this guitar quite a bit. Again, as always, I'm not the end all to be all of anything and you're not here to learn some fantastic method of changing your strings. Uh, you're actually here to learn the Sombra Amarath method of uh, changing your strings. So this is the method I use and I came up with this method based on something I read in this book right here. Guitar, a complete guide for the player. It's a great book. I got it at a Borders that was going uh, out of business. I guess they're all out of business at this point. Um, and it's a fantastic book. And I basically took the idea from this book and I kind of added my modifications on top of that. Uh, mainly because I wanted a, a simple way to change my strings. And so uh, my method is uh, in no way the, the best method in the world. But it is a good, easy method to learn. And it's uh, pretty effective uh, when you're playing and you know string breaks. Uh, I've been able to change a string in under a minute with this method uh, and it stays in tune and they stay in tune quite a while. So when it comes to changing the strings on your electric guitar you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need one of these, a string winder and definitely a wire cutter. So you can actually use a, uh, a uh, nail clipper but I like this one by Planet Waves because it has the string winder on one end and the wire cutter on the other end really handy uh, and I think these go for like 10-15 bucks and uh, if you're like me you're gonna need one of these and this is a tuner of course you've probably seen this already um, and uh, I know everyone recommends that you do it by ear but unfortunately when I do things by ear I have a nasty habit of leaving them flat so like my strings are always flat and I'm like this close to perfect but it's always flat and it annoys me so I like to do things with uh, my uh, tuner and of course when I'm on stage I have a tuner there so I've just kind of gotten used to that um, but it is good to try to do things by ear so you're gonna need those two things and you'll probably need one of these 
to plug your guitar into your tuner. Of course, there's a guitar cable. This is a monster cable. And you're definitely going to need these. Uh, these are D'Addario strings. I use a 0.10 to a 0.46 gauge. So uh, not exactly the heaviest strings in the world. They're actually kind of light. Um, they come in this box. I got a set of 10. But it looks like that. And yeah, these come inside. Uh, I like the uh, D'Addario's because you know they're all they're color coded, so you know what color goes into what after a while, and they're just generally good strings. So that's what we're going to be putting on this particular guitar. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the E string and go down. So we'll get to that right now. I've been told that it's a good idea to take your strings off one by one and replace them. In other words, you take off. The first string and you replace it and then you move on to the next one take it off and replace it and so on and so forth and uh, I've been told that it has to do with the tension on your neck and that way your neck uh, you avoid your neck warping because if you take it off um, I guess uh, that tension is gone and then when you apply that tension again uh, I guess it, it, uh, it damages your neck then there's uh, other schools of thought which say you should take off all your strings at once uh, you know clean your guitar and then restring it. Uh, personally, I don't. I don't take off all my strings unless I, I'm gonna clean my guitar, um, and I'm not gonna do that now. So, so what I like to do is uh, go one by one, and I go from the heaviest to the lightest. So from top to bottom, low E to high E. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So uh, here we go. Now you're gonna see the Sombra Amarath method of changing strings, and I'm gonna go ahead and go slow, of course and uh, just kind of show you how I do things. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your strings out. And so you go ahead and uh, get them out. On these, uh, on these Diodarios, the top, the low E is uh, brass. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, the little ball is brass. Um, so that's the first one we're gonna do. And what I like to do is I like to go ahead and start unwinding it. We could probably use this thing. That's the wrong way. So you go ahead and unwind it. I'll try to speed up through this. And yeah. So once I have it pretty slack, I just go ahead and uh, unravel the 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 string and I go ahead and pull it through the eye hole right here whoops there we go sometimes they get kind of stuck um, and then what you want to do is go ahead and pull it push it down through the saddle here or where the saddle is and try to get it out the back side. Um, I have no this guitar is notorious for being problematic, but encountering some problems. It seems my string has decided to go God knows where. All right, so the string on this one's a little, I don't know, it's whack in there. So you, sometimes you might have to kind of wrestle with it a bit get it out of the hole and it helps to turn it upside down like this and just kind of see what the problem is when it won't come straight out and then just pull it out through the back and there you go so your string is gone and just kind of tie it up a little bit and get it out of the way I put them on the floor in a neat pile Okay, so your E string is completely off. So, what the book says to do is have your, uh, the eye hole on the tuning head right here, for it to be parallel to the nut, which is this right here, this white part right here where all your strings kind of sit. And that's what I like to do. I like to leave it parallel, it just makes it easy. And um, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna unravel your uh, strings. I'm really bad at this. I always make a mess of it. But hey, in the end, all that matters is that your string gets put back on the guitar. 
And so you're going to go ahead and find the correct uh, hole here in the back to put your string into. And that's why it helps to do them one by one because you know exactly which one needs to be put back in. So we go ahead and put it in the hole we just took out the last string from. And then you see as it comes out here in that hole in the saddle. And you pull it up. And so what you want to do is pull it all the way through as far as it'll go. And then here's the here's the, the trickiest part of it. The book says to give it one wrap around around the, the without without putting it in through the hole. You wrap it around on the outside. So basically what you're doing is let's see if we can get you closer here. You're gonna wrap it around this way, around from the inside and around. And uh, it's just to do it once and then to put it in through uh, the eye hole. Um, that doesn't work for me. What I like to do is um, wrap it around twice. So I pull it all the way up, pin it down, and then I wrap it around twice. Oops, I'm not even showing you guys. So I wrap it around twice. And then I go ahead and put it into the hole. And you put it in through the hole. Make sure it doesn't get stuck under other strings. And then you go ahead and pull it. And you pull it. Oh. Make sure it doesn't get stuck on other tuning heads. You pull it all the way out. And then you go ahead and start turning. And so you turn it. I like to hold it because it just, you know, wiggles around and slaps you and it's annoying. And then after you've got it kind of tight, I like to leave it there. And then I like to cut the excess string off. Now, the book says that the first wrap around your string should un should go under it and apparently that's what happens to me I never plan it that way but that's what's supposed to happen um, I never actually make sure that it that the first this the first wrap around actually goes over the string over where it comes out in the hole um, but that's what you're supposed to do according to the book I just kind of wrap it around um, so then what I like to do is I like to go ahead and cut the excess string and what I do is I cut so that there's just enough left remaining to bend it in and it touches the bottom of the tuning head so I cut right there pretty close to the end and there you go you can't see it unfortunately I'll, I'll definitely try to demonstrate this way better with the acoustic one. But there's a little nub right there and then you can just bend it with your thumbnail. And that's what I do. I go ahead and bend it with my thumbnail. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and replace the rest of these. Alright, so as you can see, I am, or maybe you can't. Let's see. There we go. So you, as you can see, I'm down to one string. All my strings except for this bottom one are nice and shiny. And uh, what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're gonna go ahead and do the E string just so I can go over some other stuff that I've failed to mention. So the first thing is that for you beginners, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and pluck your string if you're not certain which way to rotate the tuning head. So if you hear that kind of dead whining sound, you're down tuning. If you hear this sound, it sounds like tension, you're tuning it up. So what you want to do is down tune. You want to hear that dying sound. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, and basically you've down tuned and the string is slack. So it's ready to be taken off. All right. And it's rolled off. And 
it should come out the bottom like I said before now if it doesn't come out right away fear not if you have a strat like mine or a strat like guitar you probably have this plate in the back if the string won't come out really all you have to do is get a screwdriver Phillips head or the one that has the cross I believe that's a Phillips head if I'm wrong you know whatever the one that has the cross that'll help you uh, remember uh, which one and you just take this plate off and you should be able to take take the string out I'm going to go ahead and try to find out why the string won't come out. And it looks like it's getting stuck somewhere. So what helps on my guitar is to rotate it a little bit. Rotate it into place. Um, it's still being really weird. Now if you fall into this problem, you can make it come out another hole <laughs> and uh, here's another one if you can get it to the tip of, oh, of one of the holes on the back here but you can't quite get it out one of the things to do is take the excess string from say your E string your low E string and all of these tend to have a little hole here in this bottom part and if you can get the string in you can go ahead and pull it out that way so that's uh, one method of doing things. Uh, as you could see, hopefully in the picture-in-picture um, picture here, I took it out through this second hole. Uh, this guitar is kind of weird, but um, you know, that's just another idea on how to get your gu guitar string out. Sometimes they get stuck. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and unravel this E string so there's our E string of course we go back here and uh, a good method of figuring out which one it is is if you hold it up to the light it'll be the only one that you can see right through so it's this one down here just in case you've forgotten where you took the string out from and of course you want to make the string go right into the light sometimes it's kind of weird especially with these little ones Sometimes they hit stuff in there and they don't go through. So, there you go. You got to be careful and go ahead and feed it. Once you feel it at the bottom, you can just turn your guitar over. You go ahead and pull it all the way to the end. Now, if your guitar has these little pegs right here, these little posts, which honestly I don't even know what they're called. Um, Remember that the string has to go into that little dip that they have in there for it before you wind it because it'll cause problems if you try winding it and then try putting it into that, uh, that little dip right there. It's just too much of a headache. And of course I do the two, uh, two uh, wrap arounds before I put it in through the eye hole. And once you put it in through the eye hole, you go ahead and tighten it which basically means you uh, move the tuning head in the opposite direction of what you did to take the string out. And again, you do it until it sounds very, well not very tense, but tense enough. And then you go ahead and remove the excess string. Sorry about that. <laughs> there you go. And then what's left, you just bend down and there you go sounds horrible but your strings are on so next thing I like to do is because your strings are new they're gonna be stretched out I like to stretch them out a little bit just like that and you can hear that it's detuning so you stretch them out and you go ahead and stretch them out just give it a good stretch all along the neck don't be very violent with it just kind of tug at it so I get it a little bit all the way up the neck. That's just the way I do it. I don't know if there's any benefit really to going up the neck, but I like doing it all the way up. And you know, it makes it not boring to be stretching in just one place. And it sounds even worse than before. Yay! So this is where uh, this is gonna come in. 
So now I have uh, my guitar plugged into my tuner right here, my core tuner, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. All right, and what you wanna do is have your volume all the way up, and go ahead and strike the E string. I like to tune from the low E to the high E. So what you wanna do is just go ahead and strike it, and then tune it up. And then when you get the note you're looking for, this is the low E, what I like to do is leave it just slightly sharp, just a little bit, because again, they will continue stretching, and uh, this way, you know, they'll down tune back into, into the place they're supposed to be. So that's the low E. Now we go ahead and do the A string. It's the fifth string from the bottom up, or the second string from the top down. And that would be from where you're looking down. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these. All right, so they're tuned. A uh, couple notes: uh, you you want to be very careful when you're tuning them. Don't be in a rush. You know, uh, unless you're at a show, then you might be in a rush. But uh, tune them slow. Uh, get them right in, into the spot they need to be because it, sometimes you know the tuner does take a little bit to react um, and uh, you want to get it just right because if you tune it too fast you tune it too much you get it too tight it'll snap on you and uh, I've had strings snap on me when I was a beginner it doesn't feel very good and it hurts really bad and it leaves cuts um, so you want to be very careful so that's basically the way that I uh, uh, change the strings on my electric guitar uh, I will be doing a more in-depth uh, one on how to do it for my acoustic guitar. Uh, I know this video hasn't been entirely great, and I do apologize for the length. Unfortunately, I'm not able to make a more in-depth video at the moment, uh, but I'll definitely make one that's uh, much more clear and coherent for the acoustic guitar, uh, which is basically the same method, just that on some of the acoustic guitars, you need to remove uh, the little pegs at the bottom uh, where the strings are held down in the bridge. So if you like the video, remember to give me a big thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. If you have any criticisms, please leave it in the comments. If you have any knowledge to share with the rest of us, again, please leave it in the comments. Um, and if you really like my video, remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.